Welcome one and all to the party world. We return to the world of Gunya Monster, but tonight's show is a little different from what I usually do. I want to talk about Gunya Monster's story tonight. Why am I doing such a thing, I hear you ask? Good question. Honestly, because I was surprised at just how good the story is in both implementation and telling, and honestly, I kind of want other people to, to know about it. I wasn't expecting this game to have a story mode when I bought it, and even when I found out, I didn't really expect it to be any good either. But boy was I wrong to write this off. I never thought a party game story would leave such an impression on me, but here we are. Now, to be fair, similar titles such as Dead by Daylight and Project Playtime also have some lore or story elements to them, so Gunya Monster having a story is nothing groundbreaking. However, I believe that Gunya Monster tells an incredible story, and I would like to explain why. The story of Gunya Monster is formatted in a seven-part episode. Each episode is 20 parts, with each episode releasing individually. As of this video, there are only four episodes released, not including the prologue. I was originally planning on covering everything at once, but I figured I could delve into more detail if I covered each episode individually, um, ded dedicating a whole uh, video to each one. So, tonight, my dear audience, you get the prologue and episode one. And next time we cover Gunya Monster, y'all will get episode two, and so on. The prologue isn't crazy long, so I feel including it shouldn't be too much of an issue. It is formatted to teach players the game. I'm going to focus solely on the story and ignore those parts. The prologue begins by introducing us to the main cast. Four individuals, all strangers to each other, named Toad, Piraruku, Octo and Snail, and immediately they are shown to be in a dangerous spot, surrounded by undead creatures. In this short scene, we come to learn a bit about the personalities of these four, with Piraruku freaking out about the undead, and Snail being shown to be a carefree spirit that's only interested in actually fighting the undead. Meanwhile, Toad and Octo are lost in thought, wondering about the situation that they find themselves in. It is here that they encounter another creature, Gunya, a cat tentacle monster who emerges from the shadows and introduces himself as a creature that couldn't become a real monster. Strangely, this creature offers them weapons to use to fight against the undead, which they accept. But Toad is shown to be suspicious of the creature, but more so of the weapons that he has provided them. Octo, on the other hand, seems to be infatuated with the creature, calling it a cute cat and declaring that he loves cats. Upon defeating the undead, Gunya congratulates them and explains to the confused bunch the state of the world they find themselves in. It is revealed that the world has undergone some sort of change resulting in the emergence of creatures called monsters who command the undead and unleash them on others, causing chaos. This understandably shocks the group. However, Gunya assures them that as long as they have weapons, they can fight back and invites them to become fighters against the monsters, which he calls busters. Ever battle-hungry, Snail immediately takes the offer gleefully. Piraruku is appalled by such an offer and refuses. However, Gunyan seems aware of how to convince her and tempts her with the promises of riches and shopping for defeating the monsters, which for Piraruku is more than enough to convince her to change her mind. Toad, being the eldest among the four, decides to also join after Piraruku, declaring that it's too dangerous for a couple of kids to join. Octo, although smitten to Gunya, is shown to be hesitant to fight against the monsters and only changes his mind when Gunya states that the monsters are causing a problem for him as well. This concludes the prologue and sets up for episode 1, Journey of Endless Battles. There are 20 parts. Part 1, Searching for People, 1. After a fight, Gunya congratulates the Busters with the group quite tired, save for Snail, who is clearly interested in continuing the fight. This manic desire surprises Piraruku. Even Gunyan is impressed at her endurance. Piraruku scolds her for only fighting and not helping to carry souls, showcasing that Snail is solely focused on lone fighting at this time. Gunyan seems disturbed that Snail isn't collecting souls, even scowling at the notion that souls are being left behind. Octo comments on why they are collecting souls, and Gunyan explains that if souls are left unattended, monsters can revive the undead. This is where the soul pot is explained. Toad comments on where souls go, to which Gunyan claims to not know. The group continues to discuss what to do, and Toad mentions that they can't go anywhere due to the undeadification. 
which seemingly has changed everything and is the root cause of all of this. Octo, curious, asks what this is. Toad explains that undeadification is a strange phenomenon happening all over the world that occurred suddenly, twisting the world around them and filling it with monsters and the undead. The news causes the group to despair about what was happening with the exception of Snail, who is simply eager to continue fighting. So Toad recommends trying to look for other people to calm the group. The group agrees that it is better than doing nothing, and Snail perks up at the mention of looking for people, which confuses Octo initially, but he keeps it to himself. Goonie agrees to the idea and says that he actually has met other people, which surprises the entire group. Following another battle, the group arrives in a forest setting, with Gunyan complimenting them on the fight. The group seems to have more confidence in battle, thanks to the many fights they have been in so far. Toad and Pieruku question Gunyan on his mentioning of meeting others. Gunyan apologizes for not telling them, but Octo comforts and defends Gunyan from any blame. Gunyan admits that he doesn't know where any other humans are exactly, since everyone is constantly on the move and that they really need to be lucky if they're to find anyone, which Piraruku and Toad respond to negatively. Toad questions where all the undead are coming from, to which Gunian explains that the undead spawn in changed areas thanks to the undeadification process. The souls of the dead are revived where areas change and the undead obey the monsters. This news understandably freaks out Piraruku. This prompts Snail to tease her a bit, calling her fear reaction was funny, to which Piraruku denies. While this is happening, Toad and Octo were wondering why the undead and monsters work together, since they can't they don't seem to communicate in any of the battles that they take place in. And Piraruku asked what motive the monster has for unleashing the undead on the world. However, Toad seems to say that it doesn't matter, and that they should just keep looking for people. Snail then admits that when looking, she is looking for her older brother, which shocks the group. The group has made it to another section of a winter wonderland, and after a battle, Toad notices Octo feeling off. Octo admits that he is a bit discouraged since they have not found anybody. Piraruku questions if Gunyan has really met other people, to which Gunyan assures that he has. Toad mentions that everybody is just worried about their friends and family, and the topic of Snail's brother comes back up. Snail describes her brother as a wonderful brother, smart and kind, never getting angry at her or leaving her. Pieraruku questions the part where Snail mentions that he has never left her alone, potentially implying that people have left her in the past. Toad asks about her parents, but Snail seems to not care all that much about them. The group is slightly put off by this, so Toad shifts and asks Pieraruku, to which she seems surprised. Piraruku admits that she is looking for her mother and father, and almost mentions someone else, but stops herself. But in her head, she promises herself that she is never going to look for a certain guy. Toad accepts the answer and says that he is worried about his own family. Toad and Octo, Toad asks Octo, and he mentions that he misses his parents, but never had any siblings. He is worried about finding them, to which Piraruku then tries to comfort him. Toad feels bad about Octo's situation and thinks that anyone would be sad in their situation until he sees Snail humming and shrugs claiming that everybody has different ways of dealing with the situation. Gunian seems upset to hear the news about Octo and Pieruku then asks Gunian that as a monster if he knows what the other monsters are up to. However, he denies this. He encourages the Busters though to keep at it and not give up. Toad then reassures Octo that he isn't alone and can rely on them. Now at, now at a pyramid, Gunian compliments the Busters for getting better and stronger. The conversations turn to weapons when Toad asks if Pieruku has been switching her weapons and is dismayed that neither Pieruku and Snail change their weapons. Toad then goes on a rant about weapons, praising them, even comparing them as his own children. Pieraruku is understandably weirded out by this, but strangely enough, Snail seems to understand Toad's love for weapons. Pieraruku tells Snail to pick up her weapon, which uh, was on the ground. However, she is surprised when Snail doesn't recognize it as hers. The weapon on the ground is revealed to not be Snail's, as she put hers away already. Toad questions where they saw the weapons, and Octo responded. It was on a path they were passing. Pieraruku questions why Toad is concerned for a random weapon. 
The Toad says that if a weapon was not theirs, then it could mean that there are other busters around. This perks up everybody else, and they all decide to look around, with Toad thinking that there was something weird about the situation, as weapons could be refueled, so throwing one out was suspicious. Pierre Gou calls him over, but he is still uneasy about the situation. After traveling around and battling more, the group still haven't found any other people, and the clue they found about the pyramid turned out to be a dud. Octo starts speculating about what happened to the buster, which freaks out Pieroku, considering the person might have been attacked by a monster, with Toad having the same thought but not wanting to depress the others, refrain from saying anything. Gunian offers to fly ahead to scout out any people claiming that seeing Octo sad made him want to help. Pieroku and Octo were touched, but Toad seemed suspicious of this. The others thank Gunian, and Snail asks Gunian to let her know if he sees her brother, to which Gunian agrees. But Toad asks if Gunian had ever met Snail's older brother before. Gunian replies to this with a no, and Pierre Ruku asks if something was wrong, to which Toad retracts his statement and wishes Gunia luck. Octo and Pierre Ruku have started to miss Gunian, but Toad says that he wanted to talk to the group. Toad questions Gunian and his motives, calling him suspicious, surprising the group with Pierre Ruku asking if he thought Gunian was an enemy. Octo is shocked and defends Gunian. Toad reassures them that he doesn't think that Gunian is an enemy, but that he is suspicious by bringing up that Gunian agreed to look for Snail's brother without knowing what he really looked like. This shocks the group, but Pierre Ruku is hesitant to label Gunian as an enemy. Toad realizes that he is the only one who doubts Gunian currently and backs off, with his one true concern being that Gunian might be keeping secrets from them. After finishing another fight, Octo is still upset that Gunya has not returned to the group. He admits to everyone that he feels comfortable around Gunya, and Toad likens this feeling to having a sibling, which he relates to. Toad then asks Pieruku if she has any siblings, which flusters her. Pressured by the other, she admits that she does have a brother, but finds him irritating for spacing out all the time or napping in weird places. Her dislike for her brother, who she later reveals is a younger stepbrother, surprises the group, with Toad trying to redirect the conversation so as not to create an awkward moment. He st starts on weapon maintenance and asks Snail for her weapon, which distracts Snail from questioning Pieruku about her brother any further. This prompts Pieruku to question Toad on it being strange how familiar he is with the weapons they all use. Toad initially played off as him simply liking weapons, but Pieruku insists uh, that he knows more than a normal person would about maintenance for these weapons. She accuses him of hiding something, pressuring him to reveal his secret. Toad then admits that he used to work at a weapons research lab. However, due to the world changing, his lab doesn't exist anymore. When asked why he never said anything, he mentions that Gunian giving him weapons was strange since he was unsure where Gunian could have gotten his hands on them. Trying to figure it out, he wanted to keep his past a secret. Toad insists that they can talk about it another time. Octo still trusts Gunian, however, and hopes that he comes back soon. Even so, his confidence in what to believe has been shaken and he is unsure of what to believe due to the strange circumstances surrounding Toad and Gunian. After another battle, Octo looks downcast, and Snail wonders why. Pieruku tells him that he has been like that ever since Gunian disappeared. Octo pushes the group to look for Gunian, but Toad warns that being impatient and reckless is far too dangerous, and that they should venture to where the weapons research lab used to be, as he wanted to check up on something bothering him. They decide to split up, with Snail and Toad going to the remains of the lab and Octo and Pieruku waiting for Gunian. Toad tells them to come up with an excuse in case they run into Gunian again, as he does not want Gunian to know his every move. Octo and Pieruku suddenly meet up with Gunian, who appears behind them. He apologizes for taking a long time, delighting Octo. Gunian announces that he has run into other humans. He claims that it took a while to find anybody and that's why it took him so long. Gunya then notices that Toad and Snail are both gone and asks where they went. Pieruku makes excuses for them as Toad asked, which seems to satisfy Gunya. However, he urges that they need to find Snail to tell uh, her about the humans since one of them looked 
like her, meaning it could have been her brother. Cutting to where Snail and Toad are, the lab is gone and not much remains. Looking around, Toad asks if Snail has found anything, to which Snail responds, the undead. Toad, aware of the bad position they were in, insists that they hide to the chagrin of Snail, who was eager to fight. She agrees, but Toad was surprised, since there were no undead prior to them coming to the lab. While Toad was thinking, Snail seems to recognize something in the distance and runs off, surprising Toad. Snail, hearing a voice, runs toward it, but arriving, she doesn't see anybody, with Toad eventually catching up to her. They both notice a rustle and prepare for what they might encounter. The rustle turned out to be Gunian and the others, who had come looking for them. Snail believes that her brother was there, the voice belonging to him, with this being the reason she ran off in the first place. She wants to give chase and look around, but they are then surrounded by undeads. Gunian suggests running away, which seems to put off Toad and Pieruku and make Snail sad. Octo, however, wishes to fight surprising Gunian. Toad tries to warn Octo, but Octo has made up his mind to try and find Snail's brother, claiming that they finally found somebody, and it is important to, and is someone important to Snail, so they have to at least try. This shocks Snail and encourages everyone else. Suddenly, a monster, different from the others, shows up. However, it does not immediately attack. It takes a look at the group and then suddenly vanishes, taking with it all the undead under its control. Another day, another battle. Toad and Octo are wrapping up when they discuss how Snail has been bummed out about her brother. While she is still fighting, it's clear that Snail's heart was not in it as usual. It's sad then to see Snail look so sad, and Toad mentions that while Pierre Ruku went to see how that she was doing, he should do so as well. We then cut to Pierre Ruku trying to comfort Snail, albeit rather poorly, trying to figure out what she could say to cheer up Snail. Suddenly, Snail asks Pierre Ruku to talk about her younger brother. Pierre Ruku doesn't want to, but realizes that it might get Snail out of her bad mood and agrees, although she warns that it's not a fun story. She reveals that Silone is the name of her stepbrother, and then complains that all he does is sleep and space out, never making decisions and having a goofy look on his face, calling him pathetic. Snail comments that he sounds like the complete opposite of her brother. Pinoruku says that she doesn't have any good memories of him, and is relieved at having more fun than before the undeadification. She tells Snail not to tell the others, however. Snail seems to be happier now, laughing that she has a secret with Pieruku claiming, secrets are fun to keep but more fun to tell. Snail also admits that she is happier with the way the world is now, she likes fighting with the others but still wants to find her brother and fight alongside him as well. Pieruku starts to lament, however, that despite fighting along with everyone for some time, she really doesn't know much about anybody in the group whatsoever, as she had no idea how to help Snail. Wanting to learn more about each other, she asks the name of Snail's brother, to which he responds, Slug, with her even having a nickname for him, Slug Bro. Snail then says that they should also look for Ceylon, surprising uh, Pieraruku, who asks why they would do that. Snail wants to help her find her brother, as she is trying to help her find hers. Pieraruku gets annoyed, asking if Snail was even listening to anything that she was saying. Slug just looks confused, which further exasperates Pieraruku. Snail just laughs, which Toad and Octo see, but they wonder why Pieruku looks so angry, to which Pieruku denies anything happened. Toad looks on the group and is happy to see that the group has started to grow closer and to support each other, not only in battles, but outside of them as well. Despite being happy, Toad has still been having thoughts about Snail's brother, considering the possibility of what happened to him. The group, after a battle, starts to comment on how the monsters have been getting stronger and more frequent and they are wondering why this is. Snail, of course, is just happy to fight with the monsters and claims that there might just be more of them now. Toad agrees to this sediment, asking Gunyan if he is correct. Octo and Pieruku wonder why he would even bother asking Gunyan. Toad explains that he has been wondering if they have already been meeting people. Bringing up factors such as the discarded weapon they found a while back has given him a theory the weapon, after inspection, was not broken or had anything wrong with it. Chode initially chalked it up to coincidence, but after finding more discarded weapons at the weapons research lab, he realized there was something bigger going on, especially considering monsters and the undead appearing more in the places where weapons were discarded. 
the lack of people, the discarded weapons, and the increasing of monsters in the same area paints a clear picture to Toad. The Busters are becoming monsters. He confirms this theory with Goonie, who says it's true. Toad asks why Goonie never told him about this truth. Goonie insists that he didn't mean any bad of it, and none of them had turned into monsters, so all was well. If they knew that monsters were former people, then they might be hesitant to fight against them. The group is shocked to learn this and wonders why people would be turning into monsters. Gunin explains that they might have done it to become stronger, to be the very strongest. Octo is shocked to hear that people might be becoming monsters for such a reason, even though others are suffering because of this. Gunin comforts Octo but says that humans think differently and that maybe Slug has become a monster. Toad hypothesizes that it might have been the monster that they met at the weapons research lab, and Gunian says that it is possible, but that they need to keep fighting and that the world depends on them no matter what. Peruku says that Gunian has gone way too far and can't really be asking Snail to fight her family. Snail is understandably upset by this news, but remains silent considering the possibility that her brother is now a monster. Octo declares that he can't forgive the monsters for all the chaos that they have caused, but wants to hear what the monsters have to say. Toad is surprised to hear this and mentions that no monster has ever talked to them so far. But Octo believes Slug might be different, since he left when he saw that Snail was in the group. He wants to go to Slug and find out why he became a monster, and learn more about what happened to the world. Everyone seemingly agrees that the next mission is to now find Slug and find out what he has to say. With a newfound confidence and a goal in mind, they set out to find Snail's brother and uncover more about the new world they find themselves in and the truth behind it all. And with that, the curtain closes on the story of episode 1. You can probably see why I chose to keep it to one episode per video, each one is deceptively long for only having 20 parts. Having an apocalyptic setting, um, while not a new concept, is played out quite convincingly here. The story does a good job bringing life into the world and to the cast. We learn quite a bit about their past and personality. Each one is unique in their mentality and behavior, which is even reflected in their age difference. Toad, being the oldest of the group, is more prone to consider suspicious situations as compared to Octo, a 10-year-old that is more willing to trust Gunian due to his love for cats. When this faith is questioned by Toad, someone that Octo is also friendly with, he becomes confused and isn't really sure what to believe in. And just in episode 1, we can see the changes and growth from the characters from part 1 all the way to part 20. Toad becomes more compassionate to the feelings of others and starts to keep his suspicious um, thoughts to himself as to not bring down the morals of the group. Meanwhile, Octo becomes braver as he wishes to help Snail and the others with their issues despite his original fear of the undead and monsters, even wishing to talk with them to understand the other side. Pira Ruchu becomes closer to the others and begins to care more about them, with her friends, with her being the first to comfort the saddened snail toward the end of the episode. Snail, while remaining the most consistent, as she usually only wants to fight monsters, is shown to have a more personal side that is revealed when her brother is involved. She is happy to search for and talk about him, however is saddened when she can't find him or when he is revealed to potentially have become a monster. The goals and desires of the cast come across as natural as they traverse the new landscape they find themselves in. Each character also still has issues to deal with, however, that make one more interested in seeing how their problems are resolved. Octo's love for Gunyan, while cute, has the potential to cause problems later on if Toad's suspicions on Gunyan prove to be accurate and he becomes an enemy to the Busters. Toad himself, though, through his connections to the weapons research facility, point to him being more involved in what happened to the world more than he is potentially letting on. Averuku starts and ends the episode not very fond of her brother. As time passes, it may be that they reunite, and such an event might bring about it dire consequences for the group if they become enemies out of animosity toward each other. Snail has her own issues with her brother, potentially being a monster, and not being the same person she remembers anymore, which would actually cause incredible emotional damage to her considering that he is the person that she loves the most. And her comment about him not abandoning her 
might mean that she has some issues in the past with her parents leaving her, considering she isn't interested in looking for her. Overall, though, I hope that I had been able to show just what an interesting story Goon the Monster has. Our cast now left with even more questions as the truth of what happened to the world develops and the roles of characters are further explored. What will occur in the next episode, and where is the story going? I am aware that other episodes are out, but considering the length of the video, I think that saving those for their own video might be a better idea than shoehorning them into this one. As I stated, I think that the story that, although not revolutionary, basically being a monster takeover story, is done exceptionally well so far. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my take on it, or in the comments, what did you think of the story, and where do you think it's going? But with that said, thank you for your attendance tonight, run wild now, see you later, adios.